Hi everybody, I'm very excited to be launching a brand new online series. I'm doing it alongside a good friend, Mr. Keith Millwood. And I've got to be honest, I'm filming this now in a different location you'll notice to the interview. Uh, and that's because rather stupidly, I didn't put batteries in my camera when I pressed record and it died halfway through. So nevertheless, we're going to be going by thankfully our Zoom audio and video. But I'm really excited, as I said, it's called Curtain App and we're talking all things theatrical. So I really hope you enjoy. So over to me and Keith. <laughs> Well, thank you so much again, Keith, for joining me. I'm, I'm so excited um, that we're going to be starting this little um, new, new series, isn't it? Just talking about our, our shared love of, of musicals um, and, and theatre. Um, and you were just telling me then, weren't you? You're, you're celebrating a milestone year this year, really, isn't it? Yes. Well, I, although I think of myself as 26, something like that, I'm actually uh, celebrating my 40th anniversary of involvement in entertainment you know and uh, yeah. and i haven't stopped in all that time i was speaking to a friend this morning who was also in the very first production that i was uh, in as an adult and that was the king and i in swansea grand theater with uh swansea amateur operatic society for their grand name but uh um, I didn't uh, have a bad start because in that cast as one of the royal children was our own Catherine Zeta Jones. You know, so uh, mm. so that that was a, a great way to start. And uh, I didn't actually do a show. I did some concerts in between, but I did an, the next show again was with Swansea Amateurs, and that was uh, My Fair Lady starring. Mm. Rhea Jones and uh, you know so that was so I had two very good starts and then by the end yeah. of that year Rhea and I had joined Abbey Players and Rhea uh, got to play Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz and I was the wizard you know so, oh, wow. so well, I can see I've, it now Keith I followed the, their careers and so many, uh, you know, it, it's mm. amazing. I think there's something in the water that there's so many people from Swansea, Neath, but Albert, mm. you know, and surrounding areas, Clenetley, you know, there's such a hotbed of talent, you know, but uh, yeah. those were my earliest memories uh, in uh, theatre as an adult. I did some village um Operetta, I suppose, was mm. the proper title, but they were more like children's pantomimes, uh, always of a high standard. Mm. And um, I suppose that started me off. And uh, then, of course, uh, I started going to see things and even seeing things in the village hall would excite mm. me, you know, because I always went for the front seat, uh, as I do now. I love to, mm -hmm. I've never <laughs> unless I can see the wig line. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Yeah, but I like to see the expressions of uh, on people's mm. faces where, when they're acting, and you know, just to get a re it up close and personal, I suppose. Mm. And uh, I also feel that when uh, watching a production from the front row or somewhere near the front, you almost feel as if you're in the production or part of yeah. that production. And um, I heard something this morning. I was listening to an interview with Carol Channing. Mm. And she said that even before she knew anything about the theatre, about being on stage or anything, that um, she was asked to do some sort of message. And uh, she went mm. into a theatre and it was empty. And she just walked onto the stage and mm. felt this is hallowed ground. You know, this yeah. is something special that she knew that she had to be part of it. And and I'm sure many of us, if not all of us, you know, feel when we're walking onto a stage, even if it's an empty theater, you still get that bit of excitement. I can't yeah. quite explain it, but- there I are, know exactly I, what you mean. Mm. Mm. I, it's that sort of, um, I, I know I have it, but it's that sort of, that buzz, isn't it? And you just, I don't know, it's that, I think it's because you know what's, what's been there before. I and think you know how it. special it is as well, I think. Yes, yes. Th that's what I've always found. Yes, yes, I think it is that, you know, whether it is ghosts of, you know, of previous mm. productions. But you, there's a feeling of excitement, you know, just stepping on even to a bare stage. And then there's yeah. stages that, uh, that um, 
I have got to know, I'm thinking of, of the Grand Theatre in Swansea, which is, mm. uh, as I was describing to my friend this morning, uh, similar to many London theatres, because it, they, yeah. they, these, um, well, some of them are Matcham, the, gra the Grand Theatre isn't Frank Matcham, but, you know, still got that oldie worldy mm. feel and the... Um, uh, the beautiful architectural features and uh, the mm. cherubs and uh, you know that uh, even within the circle you know it looks really so beautiful but yeah. when I when I walk onto the stage of the Grand Theatre I almost feel I'm home you know I, mm -hmm. I, as an amateur I did so 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 many shows and uh, all of the well-known shows from mm. uh, Carousel to 42nd Street to um, well, I'm thinking they're a little bit more obscure but even Best Little Whorehouse in Texas you know <laughs> so, but, uh, you know it's that again I'm thinking Kiss Me Kate I'm thinking of Brigadoon I'm thinking you know all of the ba the, ba the bigger shows Guys and Dolls many times but mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah so there's there is a definite special feel about that but also where I've been fortunate to be in professional productions, usually with the Stan Stennett pantomime, but going around the the theatres and uh, institutes and mm. uh, uh, of uh, South Wales, and you know, again walking on there and thinking, oh well, you know, we, we've been on afternoons and evenings and you know many performances, even mm. ten o'clock in the morning, belting out something. You know, <laughs> you, but you feel you feel at home when you turn up. You know, oh yeah. yeah. We know we know this place now. I know where I go to hang my costumes. I knew know where you know <laughs> um, yeah. where where you can grab some food or you know go in a corner to eat or whatever you mm. know. So you, so you, so you get to know the buildings you know. And uh, but you yeah. you you know you 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 have had great experiences too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I've been very lucky. Uh, I mean, I sort of the first one I remember, uh, obviously, you know, you, a lot of us had it was in school. Uh, I remember uh, my in my sort of uh, infant school, we had a really lovely stage, massive stage, yes. um, and we were very lucky. Um, and it was a, very much like a miners' hall, really. Um, and uh, and I used to love it there. And then as I went on, then I, I remember I performed um, with uh, I think it was the Helen O'Grady Drama Academy. Or oh something. yes, yes. Um, yes. And, we, and we did a show in uh, it was Barry. I think that's Barry Miners Institute. Oh yes, yes, yes. I've, I've recorded there. I haven't actually been on the stage. Mm. But I've recorded uh, with a group of singers yeah. there. But uh, well, uh, and when you think of school productions, what what productions were you involved in in school? Um, I mean, the overwhelming one I, uh, I I remember is The Wizard of Oz. I think that was possibly the first one we did. Um, and I think I was a munchkin. There's a picture of me somewhere <laughs> with two big <laughs> munchkin cheeks on me, um, which I, I remember well. Um, and then well. I got typecast after that because I ended up doing... Um, <laughs> we did two shows, once in the infant school and once in the, the junior school, primary school. Um, and I played a vicar twice. Oh, <laughs> uh, and I, I, I don't know how it all sort of fitted into things, but it was similar roles in that um, I would, they would sort of be doing this uh, out there play. You know, when they do those sort of shows and they're like um, Santa saves the day and things like that. Oh, yes, sort of yes, yes. Out there ones. And, um, and then I would <laughs> come on, usually about halfway through the show, with my dog collar on and a uh. all black suit. Um, <laughs> uh, and I would sort of come on and say, now we'll see. Uh, the true meaning of Christmas, and I did this twice, and, <laughs> and I always found it so bizarre because obviously I was sort of at one point I wanted to go into the church and things, and so I thought this is weird. This is weird. But the um, only time I've I've been a vicar, I was like a padre or whatever you call it yeah. in the Witches of Eastwick, and um, oh. <laughs> uh, and what a fun show that wasn't too mm. long ago. It wasn't too long ago, about five six years ago, with one of the companies in Neath, and. Mm. Um, in the second half, uh, uh, if we know that uh, the witches of Eastwick, everybody gets sexed up, you know, because this dance with the devil, <laughs> a big number. And uh, mm. the director, um, Bick Atkins, God bless him, he's no longer with us, but he, a, a youngish man, but he uh, uh, was saying, all right, when it comes to the... Uh, to, to the number, I want the ladies uh, who were like uh, with the negligees and uh, the horns <laughs> coming up and going in front behind the men and just ripping their shirts open. Well, it was it was all right, 
because but say he wanted me in the number. I said, well, you know, some of these uh, who are going to have their shirts ripped open, they're 20, mm. 30 years younger than me. <laughs> but I said, I've got an idea. I said, I'm playing the Padre, I'm playing the Vicar. I said, when they rip my shirt off, can I wear tassels? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I was playing the vicar, and I've been very much. I'm, I'm played in, uh, like, a bit like Derek Nemo. Is it some one of them somewhere has had sort of protruding teeth? I, I know, my, yeah, yeah. my expression was, you know, as if I had my teeth were too big for me. Older. But anyway, then it came to the second half, and um, what's funny in certain places, and you know, I go, you know, I, I like to think I've played lots of different roles and all sorts of different roles. And then people will say, oh, there's the chap, you know, the one who wore the tassels. <laughs> 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 so my reputation goes before me now. <laughs> Gosh, what a reputation to have. <laughs> I haven't got them on no. today. Oh, Promise. That's a shame. <laughs> Promise. Next time. <laughs> Can be arranged. <laughs> we, we, we have to pay you extra for that. Uh, yeah, but no, I, I, yeah, I love that, and um, and as well. Then I, I was also very lucky, and I know you know this about um, performing at Her Majesty's Theatre as well, <gasps> which is really lovely in the West End. Wow. Um, that yeah, that's one of my most cherished things. And like you said, I think when I, I mean, I was about eleven when I did that. I think, um, which is you know quite young, but I just remember it's sort of it's something that sticks with you, isn't it? Well, you just think, oh my god, Phantom gosh. the Opera has been playing, isn't it? For, exactly, for yeah. 30 and even more years, yeah. Exactly, yeah. And, and even the sort of little things, because I remember vividly sort of going into the dressing room and I think we were, I can't remember, I think we were sort of in the dressing room of the, um, the you know, the girls who are sort of dressed up for um, the opening of the the opera and they're all oh, in the oh yes of, yes yes the, the, the ballet the, the nice costumes and things mm. yeah we i think we were in their dressing room and so it was quite a long thin one it was directly under the stage Gosh. um and i remember sort of the room next door to ours was actually the pulley system so the, for the, oh, for the, um, yes. the the candelabras and things um and it was just amazing to see it and then you had all the sort of um uh, the costumes of the and, and the dummies of the masquerade ball up in the ceilings of the wow. theater and it was yes. just absolutely amazing and i think um doing that you just like you said you feel that history yes and also i think yes, as well you, you sort of um you do have a bit of a, a pressure as well i think don't you in a way because you're sort of thinking oh my gosh you know i've got to match what what's been yes, here before that's right that's right well i think a similar situation i was uh, directing an extract from oliver and it went on mm. to, onto the uh the one of the london stages and uh uh, to tell you the truth, I I had um, inherited um, yeah, this particular routine, and I was getting them to do it as best as I could. And um, the musical director was saying, really, they need more rehearsal. You know, they they uh, they um, uh, <laughs> when we were rehearsing in Swansea, um, it was getting there, but it wasn't quite mm. ready. So we rehearsed it in a room uh, attached to, to the theatre and we went through that and thought, well, it's a bit better than it was in Swansea. Mm. But then we put them on the main stage and they were fabulous. But I think, yeah. I think again, it's because, you know, that, that um, feeling that you've got to come up to the mark, you know, when mm. you're in a, when you're in a grand theatre. Yeah, yeah, I think it's very true, and I, yeah, it's it's definitely I think as well. It's something I think as as performers you thrive off as well, isn't it? Is that sense of, you know, the the buzz you get from it, um, and the excitement as well. Um, I mean, I've I've said this before because I'm I'm not a massive fan of rehearsing. I know you have to do it, but then I always find the my best sort of performance comes in the main shows. I mm, think, yeah, and I think it's and I think as well, you know when you've got the audience as well I remember in Her Majesty's um, you know at the end we all took the bows and things and we'd been given the st stern telling off that you know if you if you go near the curtain when it comes down the lead will hit you on your head and you know, <laughs> and it'll take you out and things so we all had to you know remember to move but just yeah. before they sort of dropped the final curtain we um we were standing on the stage and they said let's put the house lights up so we could all see our families and uh -huh. things and I just remember it being insane because you know it was her majesty's absolutely full and you just think oh my gosh you know all these people were there yes. um and and i think that's 
all the way through the show, I don't know if you had this, but I find all the way through the show, you don't quite know sometimes who's in the audience. No. And so you're always pushing yourself a little bit more. Yes, I think, yes. To, to, to just, um, I don't know, you know, if you're doing a funny role, make them laugh. If you're doing a sad one, make them cry. You know, oh, all that it's, sort of it's, thing. It's, it's like being given a pearl or every time you hear mm. somebody laugh, you know. And uh, you're saying this, and often it's the black blob isn't it you can see some people mm. and you know, i'm sure they see me when i'm sitting in the front row but but you see some people you can make out yeah. some but all uh, all i remember you know I, and I, I you know that the um big role biggest role i suppose i've played is max bialystok in the mm. producers and again it was uh, with vicar's director and and i had very good um you know ev- everybody else in the role you know leo bloom was brilliant uh, the roger debris was brilliant and um all i remember with that audience it was different because i could see so much movement because they were laughing so much it is very funny anyway isn't yeah. it you know but mm. uh, you know the the way that it be it had been peppered with even more humor from the director and there was lots and lots and lots of humor and whereas mm. normally you see the shape of the audience but with that audience i remember them actually just, just <laughs> well, falling about, falling about, I suppose. I know, but but you know, enjoy it so much. And and sometimes mm. when you immerse yourself in a role, you you, you know that you are nervous before it starts. It's, it's mm. excitement and nervous, but uh, and nerves. But um, you know, with that particular role, anyway, I I just felt well, you know, let's just go on, let's get on and do it. You know, it's mm. uh, it, 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 I suppose in a way and perhaps with other parts as well. It's like you're preparing, like uh, possibly a runner would be preparing for a marathon. So you've mm. done the preparation yeah. and then it comes to the night or whatever and you're, you're on, you know. It's, mm. it's, <laughs> but uh, sometimes, I suppose it depends on how ready you are, but um, it's, mm. it's surprising how many bad dress rehearsals and then you'll have a wonderful opening night. Yeah. I remember yeah, there, was, true, I there was one one show in in the Grand. Uh, um, either it was Swansea Amateurs or RP Players. I think it was Swansea Amateurs. We were doing one production of Guys and Dolls, and we started the dress rehearsal, and and that was the sort of time that you started on a Monday. You did the whole week, mm. so you had you know this Sunday to get everything yeah. on stage. Well. We the rehearsal was going on. It was stopping and stopping, and then we do a little bit more and stopping. We we didn't even get as far as Havana, you know, in the first act, yeah. and we were about yeah. twelve o'clock in the night. Oh and I was gosh. thinking, you know, <laughs> and I thought, what's going to happen here? And then somebody went to go, so how, where they got chips from, I don't know. But somebody <laughs> had a bag of chips. And we were all starving, we were all pinching the chips. I remember. <laughs> and then quite soon after that, they said, oh, you'll have to go home now. I thought, well, we haven't even done the first half. And tomorrow mm. night we're opening to a paying audience. Yeah. And uh, I remember the nerves backstage. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the nerves backstage. It was almost like hysterical, you know. You, you, some people were laughing and, you know, mm. it's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there was, I can't go into detail, but there were certain noises. <laughs> if, if I said so, like similar to if you'd be eating a lot of uh, of baked beans, perhaps you'll get the, you'll get. But you know, I, I, could, yeah, I was in this dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> Every so often, I won't say the person's unkind, but I could hear, "Oh my gosh," he said, "But I'm so nervous." He said, "I'm so nervous." <laughs> but we went on, and it it was it it was okay, you know. Um, mm. But uh, somebody saw the, the production; they saw it on the Monday night, and they came back on the Friday night. They said, "It's a different show. It's a totally different <laughs> show." I can imagine less it's wind. funny what you remember, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> it's body burping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear, God. dear, dear! But you know, have you had any um, costume experiences? You know, have you thought of anything that's uh, not fits by or fallen apart when you've been on stage? I, I had it a bit. I mean, um, when I was doing a, a Aladdin for the Cardiff Open Air Theatre, uh, and I was Jafar. I loved it. It was such a good role, and uh, we, we had a really good time. And um, and I, I I think it was because you came. I think was it on the Saturday you visited? Yes, it was excellent. And then we 
Yeah, and then we ended. Oh, thank you. We ended on the the Sunday, and it was it was pretty tough going. I mean, we we did it for a week. Uh, we start on the Sunday, end on the Sunday. Two shows a week, uh, two shows a day. Sorry, um, which was you know uh, uh, pretty tough, and uh, uh, and we had awful weather, absolutely awful for some of the days. We were some yeah. we were lucky, some we weren't, and uh, Abdul, it was Abdul theater. yeah, and uh, and literally we would find some days that we we literally had to do the show. You know, talk about doing it off the cuff. We would be told before it the ground's too muddy you're gonna to have to yeah. bring the show into the stand with the audience were because oh, yeah. we had a bit of a marquee over the audience um and i remember we, we were making up the you know the choreography and stuff as we went the <laughs> oh. stage directions because it completely went but it you know we managed to pull it off but i remember we some of the scenes we could do in the stands other ones we had to do outside so if we were sort of on the balcony as they sing Prince Ali, we had oh, umbrellas and things, and mm. the stage got so slippery, it oh. was unreal. And I had these big boots on, uh, yeah. you know, with this. I don't know if you remember my yes, costume. Yes, it was a big yes. sort of flowing black yes. uh, robe and things. Yes. Um, and I had to sort of at the end, as it's getting pulled into the lamp, I had to go straight back off stage and into this sort of shroud of curtains they had at the yeah, back yeah. of the stage and there was a smoke machine and all things like that <laughs> and I remember because the ground was really wet my feet were slipping so I was walking back and then I, the smoke enveloped me and then I had to be careful because obviously as I was going back I was like shouting no you know that sort of thing uh, and my mic was on and I went straight off the back of the stage and oh. fell um, oh, no. because I didn't realise the stage had just stopped and my foot slipped and I was gone um, <laughs> and I just thought oh my gosh and it was it, it could have gone really wrong but <laughs> thankfully no, not many people noticed it's only the people backstage um, <laughs> but I thought oh my gosh and I, I vowed from that point on I was going to not wear slippery shoes <laughs> and also try and be careful and watch how many steps I should have counted the steps really but you don't think of it do you at the time no, <laughs> you get no, so no. caught up in the moment <laughs> yes uh, my worst with costume um but it was funny in the end but uh of all things it was the merry widow and mm. uh, uh we had brand new costumes and uh, we opened the penareal theater the pleasure mm. penareal leisure center the theater we all op- opened with this particular production and uh it was it was it was beautiful and uh, uh the but in the second act there's there's a um a number called women 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 and it's uh, it's sometimes referred to as the male can can, mm-hmm. and uh, it was very well choreographed, you know. And there were you know, the, about eight men at times doing like a kick line and all different, mm. very very, you know. We 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 had been uh, drilled well, then she would say. But uh, <laughs> I'd worn this particular outfit. It's like um, oh. Uh, a fantasy European type uh, country, mm. I suppose that's what. Uh, and uh, I had, I remember, like a Russian hat on, and then I had um, puffed arms and a waistcoat <laughs> and breeches and socks that came up to my uh, knee. Mm. And uh, uh, in the dress rehearsal, everything went fine. I knew I had three poppers on the side of the breeches, and mm. as it so happened, I was on the la- I was the last guy in the kick line. And uh, on the first night, we started doing a bit of a, the kicks and the kick line, and I realised one popper went. I said, "Oh, never mind. I've got two more." And then it mm. was pop, pop. They went as well. So I was holding on to the <laughs> the britches <laughs> uh, <laughs> instead of having my hand behind my back and holding on to the britches, trying to keep them up and doing the can can. But what I didn't realise, of course, it was all gaping down the back. So I was only in my 20s but you know it, it's traditional that people clap for more at the end mm. of that number and um i was saying no no more no more <laughs> but the more i say no more the, the more they shouted more you know and yeah. and the director said oh can you do that tomorrow night and said i'll never ever be able to do it like that you know <laughs> yeah. but strange enough the leading man had a problem with his britches the next night so there we are <laughs> so, it wasn't only me <laughs> <laughs> it was the curse of the show <laughs> yeah. oh, oh gosh dear. no it's, it's it, funny though isn't it but I sometimes say, thank goodness, some things do go wrong because uh, when they go right, 
you there's you don't really remember it you think oh yes mm. but if something's gone wrong you've really got a good memory you know you yeah. you'd, you'd remember it forever <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> it's very very true yeah, yeah definitely i think so i think on that note um i, I thought it would be quite nice to start off with really sort of saying uh you know what what are your sort of your favorite shows really standout shows do you think oh gosh i know it's difficult <laughs> it is hard but i suppose there's there's two that are at the very top and i suppose mm. um it, it shows a lot if you if you can live with a show for so long and mm. um, i have been honored and thrilled to present productions of well two different productions of a little night music and uh Follies as well, and uh, so there's the, those are two Stephen Sondheim shows. I particularly like his work anyway. Mm -hmm. um, I don't whitewash, and it's not as if everything Sondheim is wonderful. And uh, I'm no not one of these who's a Sondheim lover and Andrew Lloyd Webber hater and things like that. Mm -hmm. I, I yeah. there's good and bad in all work, I think. But uh, but those two shows, and I suppose. If I was put on a rack, <laughs> I'd have to say that it's um, that it's follies would be the, mm. the very favourite. Um, yeah. I think it's because it's 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 sort of at the top uh, for most of the time. Mind you, if I see a production of a little night music, I like that the most. You know, so I think mm. there's lots there's lots of humour in a little night music, which I, which yeah. I love, and yet it's mm. beautiful, it's elegant. It's just lovely, and you know, but but what's simmering below the surface is it interesting with the little night music, and it's the mm. first thing that I chose to direct. I actually set up a company in order yeah. to present a little night Gosh. music, you know, mm. and uh, and uh, when I was uh, ringing about getting the performing rights to put it on, uh, they said, well, you've got to say the name of the company. And uh, mm. I realised I hadn't even ha had thoughts what the company was going to be called, <laughs> you know. Um, and I thought a little night music, moon moonlight. So I said moonlight, can I be? And yeah. moonlight theatre in Swansea's um, been going for about thirty years now. <laughs> but um, mm. yes, and uh, yes, so I I wanted so much to put on a little night music, and uh, then. Um, the following year put on side by side by Sondheim which we did as a glitzy affair mm. and that that was great I was so so fortunate with the casting the casting uh, mm. you know and and uh, I think that's one of I, I like to think it's one of my strengths is knowing what's appropriate for different people yeah. And um, I got, I was very fortunate. The, the lady who played Madame Armfelt was a, was a, a great friend, Beryl Williams, mm. one of the best actors, actresses I've ever known. One of these people who can walk on stage and each exit will have a round of applause, you know, and uh, in, um, anyway, yeah. uh, and, and then I managed to, I was very fortunate because I wanted to put a little night music on and there was a lady who I, very much so in the leading role as Desiree, the lady who sings Send in the Clowns. Mm. But I realised she hadn't been in a production for over 14 years. Yeah. But I, I imagined that she would play Desiree and that her daughter would play Petra, the maid. And that's an mm. important part. The Miller's son yeah. is uh, in a little night music. And uh, I asked, I was rehearsing with uh, Julie um, and... Um, Julie Thorley this is and I we were putting uh, we were in a, a half a sixpence that's what we were in and uh, uh, there was a message then she, uh, she had a message from my mum you know if you are to direct a little night music she is happy to play the part of Desiree and I'll play Petra the maiden. I thought, well, I've got yeah. half my cast. It felt as if I did. Yeah, so, yeah. so I rang Beryl, Beryl Williams, and uh, said, uh, this is quite late at night after a rehearsal. And I said, Julie and uh, Jean Thorley, uh, they're both keen to do the production. And mm. I remember Beryl, I can hear her saying, because she had a very distinctive voice, you're on your way you're on your way <laughs> and I thought well there and then I, I I was asking different people if they take part and because uh, they hadn't 
uh, ever acted with Gene Thorley, who in mm. Swansea was a bit of a legend, that people would say, yes, yes, I particularly want to. Uh, so I, ha I had, you know, hand-picked cast and they were mm -hmm. uh, terrific. If I was directing now, James, you would make a very good Henrik. You know, you'd be oh, you. again. Yeah, uh, he, 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 he's studying for the ministry, so it comes in what you've just been saying <laughs> earlier. So, I swear, um, I'm typecast. <laughs> I know, <laughs> but he enjoys himself at the end, shall we say? Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, yes, but follies, of course. That that is that is just terrific theatre. Mm. And uh, um, I am a lover of traditional songs i think you yeah. know and and um uh some may understand what i'm saying a a b a you know that mm. there's four yeah. of a song mm. you know mm. and, um and uh, that it's repeated you know with the chorus and there's uh, clever words and that um and i suppose you've got that in follies because it is pastiche of mm. in some of the numbers they're pastiche of past well-known mm -hmm. numbers yeah. you know uh so but with follies as well um you've got the sondheim type of lyric as well mm. which is a bit more yeah. modern very groundbreaking and there's mm. some again heartbreaking songs um i'm thinking even more than um losing my mind which is so well known but mm. there's a song called too many mornings and it can actually make you cry, you know. Yeah. And, and and there's another song in Buddy's eyes, you know. And and and, and they're beautiful songs. And uh, mm. some people will say, "Oh, Sondheim doesn't have melody," but you know, just play those songs. And yeah. They 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 are full of 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 melody. And so many of the folly songs are either melodious because they're, they're the tr more traditional song mm. or beautiful because you're seeing more into their characters and you're yeah. understanding what's really going on and I think that's what mm. makes a musical is when you realize and, and I think it's been said by um, musical theatre critics that when it gets too emotional you know that um it's too emotional for words you burst into song when you yeah. when it doesn't uh, show the emotions through song then you mm. burst into dance and that's yeah. how musicals are happen and uh, you know with stephen sondheim's shows in particular you can usually see that you're moving on with the show and having a mm. better in-depth knowledge and another uh, terrific Sondheim show is Sweeney Todd of course yeah so the, so that they're they're all there and you know when I saw Sweeney Todd first I just I I I remember I was I was very hot and I was thinking well, I must take my jumper off but I mm. was so into it I didn't take my yeah. jumper off because I didn't want to miss a, a moment you know yeah. and because it's so cleverly written mm. possibly a masterpiece and then uh, others then but before i say any others what are yours what what are, which ones are uh, brewing to the surface as you're thinking now? yeah it, yeah it's quite a difficult one i think i'm very much in the same sort of position as you i've got so many i love um mm -hmm. But I think, you know, uh, and I know you know this, I think that the top one is always got to be Chichity Bang Bang for me. Oh, yes, um, yes, yes. Because it was the, the first show I, I ever saw, I think it was about four on the West End uh, mm -hmm. at the London Palladium. And oh, wow. and there was just so many aspects. I mean, it's, it was just one of those shows where, you know, you you saw magic come to life right before you uh, in, in this theatre. And I think it was such a, an amazing introduction to, to the world of theatre. Car, seeing the car flying in, exactly, into yeah, the audience because... as, a, as a little boy seeing it. I can mm -hmm. imagine you to transfix <laughs> enjoying well, Exactly, yeah, because we would we always, um, you know, whenever, whenever I go with my family, we tend to sit in the circle. That's the way I like in the theatre, because oh. you can sort of mm -hmm. overlook it all. Yes, yes. Um, and, and I remember we were sitting, I think it must have been about well, second or third row of the circle, and, um, and just seeing the car literally sort of take off and come towards you. 
uh, was just amazing. And then I remember at the end, I'm sure you remember it, when the child catcher goes up in the net oh, to the back of the right theatre. The and child. Yeah, yeah. It, it was petrifying. I remember mm. being petrified because when I saw it, it was uh, Wayne Sleep oh, dear. Uh, as the child catcher. <laughs> he was he was so scary. Um, but I think yeah, I think that has to be up the top. And then I think it's closely followed by Forty Second Street. Um, oh, well, that's so exhilarating, that. isn't it? It's, it's exhilarating. It yes. Yeah, yeah. and my mum had said ever since I was very small, she said one day I'll take you to, to, to uh-huh. see Forty Second Street because I I always did tap dancing. I love tap dancing. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, thankfully, I think it was about 2017, 18, wasn't it? It was on the West End. Oh, and yes, we went to see yes. it twice, and <gasps> I loved it so much. And just yes. not not to give anything away, but the ending with the sort of, you know, they're marching up to the big staircase at the end. Well, and you it, just think, oh my gosh. It was, it was bigger and better with the production. Mm. You know, I loved the production when it was uh, first in London in the 1980s. Mm, and there's so much of that. You know, I remember, you know, they, it, they were showing a bit of it on the television and it was the early days of video and you know I, I so I, and I watched and I watched and watched and watched and watched this video you know of them doing the um, we're in the money starting off you know, as the urchins was it this mm. street uh, urchins and, and then going into the razzle dazzle you know I couldn't believe I could just keep watching it you know um, yeah young people these days wouldn't appreciate that there were times you you know you couldn't go to the computer and see an extract mm. or something or or go to, you know yeah. so video was very exciting um but yes i remember that but and the whole thing was just fantastic again coming back to Catherine, she took mm. over the role so i saw it yeah. several times and then uh, several times again when she'd taken over the role um but when it came back in 20, whatever, 16, 17, whatever, mm. when it came back, it was bigger and glitzier than ever. You know, there's mm. there's certain things I liked about the original, and yet they didn't have that as splashy an yeah. ending to it because there, there was no um, staircase when mm. uh, you know with all the tap dancing on the staircase you know and that's if you haven't been wowed before well you know i think you, you're sort of knocked in the eyes but when you see that staircase and mm. you know it's it's just you think well what more can they do you know they're yeah, so talented exactly. these people and mm-hmm. i i've spoken to one or two of them and i'm just in awe that they managed physically to mm. dance that show and yeah change 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 because when yeah. we did do it as as amateurs swansea amateurs mm-hmm. i i was playing andy lee um mm-hmm. and uh, i had a crash course in tap dancing because i hadn't danced before that mm-hmm. but the director said when he cast me he said you've got to get it right because you're playing the <laughs> choreographer in the story yeah. i thought well oh if you'd given me this part i can't can't <laughs> have that he said i believe you will and i d- had a crash course and I can, mm. to a certain extent, to, to yeah. tap dance now. But uh, I remember that in the first half alone, I changed mm. ten times. I had oh to be gosh. very, very organised, you mm. know, and, uh, because I, I didn't have a dresser, you know. And mm. I just had to know that when I come off, I go into that. Because uh, I was, as Angie Lee, I'd be in the party scene in a nice white tuxedo, yeah. and then I'd be, <laughs> oh, so there's a great, there's a great story because uh, the dame's number is fabulous. Mm, and, that's and, one of my uh, favourites. <laughs> and of course, you you start in rehearsal gear mm. on on stage, and uh, as as the time of the girls uh, then go into the. Uh, um, more extravagant, and they come out in their dresses. But by the end of the number, the chaps are also in top hat and tails, mm. looking glitzed up to the nines. Yeah. And uh, I remember, I'm not going to say the name, but the friend, and he's a wonderful person on stage, but you really mm. have to be on top of what you're changing into next. And <sighs> we changed and changed and changed. I was on the stage, and I was in my rehearsal gear mm. as you should be at the beginning of the dame's number and i looked into the wings and uh this, ch- this he was in the wrong costume he was already in the top hat and tails and i could see him and he, he well i but i'm not going to repeat the words but i could see him stamping his foot and saying <laughs> certain words he, he jumped ahead one in the change so he couldn't do the opening part of the oh, number because mm. because it was a dead giveaway then 
yeah. <laughs> come out in top hat and tails. But uh, it's funny. <laughs> I, again, it's something that went wrong, and then you remember mm. it, isn't it? You know, it's amazing. T- ten changes on the first half. That's quite a lot, isn't it? Good gosh, e- it's an awful when lot. I, when I played professional dame, I haven't changed. Mm. I'm sure it hasn't been ten changes in the first half. It might be ten yeah. changes for the whole show, but uh, not ten changes for the for the first half. <laughs> oh, good gosh, I, I don't oh, envy yeah. you. Gosh, I'm, yeah, I'm exhausted I, hearing about it. Well, you ha- you had to, and I remember another um, number with "Hello Dolly." Now, and uh, Mum's when you, it, as we say each of these, now you know they, you're sort of heart lifts when you think about them because mm. they are um, they take you out of out of your, your own world, and they they they, yeah. they are so uplifting. But "Hello Dolly," and I remember uh, we had a very good uh, director choreographer who'd worked in London and he said you know you've got to have your changes ready you know because this mm. the, at the beginning of the second half there's the waiter's gallop and then yeah. you know then you're into the dolly number straight after mm-hmm. it really so yeah. you know you have to have your red and you, the gloves and that you're not mm. wearing those for the waiters and all the acrobatic type things we were mm. doing um so but when you come off stage you've got to get it and mm. uh you know warned us all you know you've got to know exactly where things are if somebody yeah. pinches the wrong jacket or something like that oh gosh well, yeah. well you mm. know it, it, it'll all go. but you know i remember then thinking oh yeah i've got to that corner to get mine i'm gonna hide it there and that's it <laughs> but a funny thing happened really with with the producers because um leo bloom leslie waters he was he was he's tall and slight mm. And um, the changes have gone really well all week. And we did have dresses helping us because some, some changes uh, were within, say, 40 seconds for, mm. um, for Max, Max and Leo. And um, there's one part right at the end where we get taken off to jail. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know, this is the Leo and Max bit now at the end, mm. you know. Yeah, with, know. <laughs> sing, sing and all that. And um, <laughs> so... We, we had gone through the shows and yeah but the last night the last th- last few minutes really of the show I go off into the wings to grab the costume and you really had to just go yeah and um, somehow or other the dresses had got the but costumes mixed up. So I had this really, you know, he was, he's, he's painful, but really quite slight in that. But somehow yeah. or other I made, God knows how, but I made the co- his costume fit me. And oh, of course the trousers, <laughs> but I still did the whole number. And I thought, well, how on earth did wow. I manage to do that? Mm. A, that's the wrong costume. So with God <laughs> help, he, he had mine, it must have been like a big mountain. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, dear, dear! Oh. But it's amazing. What do you what do you think of? But it, but it, mm. the producers, when you're watching that, it's just an out and out laugh. And I think it is. Mm. it's the same with things like the Book of Mormon. That um, you you One remember these shows more for the laughter in a way. The songs are great, but you, yeah, you, it's the comedy that you that I suppose it's the same with Young Frankenstein and other Mel Brooks as mm. you know. Yeah. Definitely, I, I love Mel Brooks. I um, it was actually a, a brilliant one. I don't know if you've seen it with him at the Kennedy Center Honors, and they sort of um, did a celebration of his shows. And I think Jack Black was involved, and oh yes, and those yes. sorts of people. Yes. Yeah, and, and I was watching that actually the other day, and it's it's fab, mm-hmm. and he's done so many you know brilliant shows and things like you know High uh, Society, yes. things like that. Yes, mm. and yes, High Anxiety. I love that one. Mm. Yes, it's a uh, yes. Uh, I I really go with the humor, and and uh, it's, you know. It's, not that long ago, I, I, a friend who I, I love, she said, oh, I really don't see the humour in, in the producers. But I suppose we're all different, aren't we? You know, there's certain yeah. things, you know, humour is quite an unusual one, really. But, uh, mm. you know, that that uh, some people will find certain things extremely humorous. And then I just yeah. don't. But, I, but I, I generally find with musical comedy that I do mm. find, generally speaking, very funny i think what's clever yeah. what's clever about musicals as well is that the script has to be right the story the mm, script definitely. the story and script have to be right and i think there's something very very clever because sometimes there's not much script between songs and mm, yet with that yeah. small amount of script it will say so much 
or move yeah. on so much. Or, yeah. You know, I th and that, that's that's quite amazing. And you know, you mm. get that in Forty Second Street. You get exactly. that in, in the in the Mel Brooks shows. You get that mm -hmm. with the Sondheim. You know, so so. I think the best shows, really. Yes, people say yes. You've got to have a good story, but you've got to have a good script as well. You mm. know, it's a, yeah, I'm, thinking of, I, I'm thinking of another one of your favourites, which I know is La Cage au Fall. And again, there, the, the script mm. is wonderful. Yes, yeah, and exactly. And I think that totally, I agree with what you were saying because with La Cage, you, you, I have never thought about it before. But when you think about it, it does have such a a, a good flow to it because it's just every piece of the dialogue complements you know the music that's going to come i'm yes. thinking of um uh a little more is it was little more mascara or something like that oh yeah um, that's, that's a, one um, of my favorite songs it's and wonderful. um yeah and song on the sand and things like that and it all flows mm. so well and i think um I, I love that about it and i remember as well the sort of scene you have with um uh when he sort of tells albert doesn't he um that you know you're gonna to have to not come to to meet the sort of new in laws oh, and things, yes. and then it goes into um, oh I, I'm trying to think of the name of the song now. I think it's masculine as well. The song is called, isn't it? Something? Oh yes, yes, yeah. yes, masculine um, toast. Him up. <laughs> yeah, exactly that. And, Al, uh, Alban, and Alban, yeah. yes, uh, uh, yes, and George, and but yes, it's mm. uh, it's it, that was such a special show, really, wasn't it? You know, because it was it the was. first and it's mainstream, real mainstream music. But mm. with a with a gay theme, you know, exactly. and uh, um, and the actual timing of it. I know that uh, productions came off because uh, of AIDS and that. Mm. But you know, but it it was how brave, how brave, and how different for Jerry yeah. Herman to you know, to go for that theme you know yeah. it was you know it was very brave uh, but very. but some of the some of the best writing is there isn't it you know that because mm -hmm. when you think of i am what i am it is yeah. the most so sort of defiant song isn't it you know and uh, yeah. uh we i was first uh, uh, introduced to it with gloria gain i've never hit and i yeah. i didn't realize i thought i really like that song but mm. i and then of course uh, it became obvious that it was uh, of Lacage au Fall. And, uh, mm. and uh, I remember taking my mother, I was studying in London at the time, mm. similar to you, uh, uh, James, where I was studying, and my mo mother came to stay for the weekend, and she said, well, let's choose a show you haven't seen. And I said, well, I haven't seen Lacage au Fall yet. Yeah. And, and I thought, well, I don't know how my mother will feel about watching, you know, this theme. And, 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 uh, well, we both thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. And uh, afterwards, my mother uh, was saying, you know, it, it was just treated so tenderly, really, you know, the approach mm -hmm. to it. And um, recently I've heard uh, uh, Jerry Herman and some others talking about the show. God, with it, it, God bless, he's not with us now. But it was a, a, an interview from from a few years ago. And uh, they were wondering how universal the story of mm. uh, La Cage Fall, you know, how it would go across with Maine, yeah. especially, you know, with America. And uh, some, I've been fortunate to travel a lot in America singing, mm. and I've got to know a lot of Americans. And, and America is actually more religious than yeah. Britain, I'd say, in general. Um, yeah. It's true. So, uh, but um, and you'd wonder how it would go in New York, how it how it mm. would go in, in different parts of America. But th they said in the first previews, they will you know just happen to see audience reaction. Mm. And when uh, when the two men were singing "Song on the Sand" that you've just mentioned, yeah, you know, um, a, a heterosexual couple and an a, a older generation. And they just reached out for each other's hands and they said, yes, sure. yes, mm, it just shows. Sure. It's it's about love in the end. Yeah. And it doesn't matter exactly. who that, you know, who, who, if it's between man and man or man and woman or whatever, you know, it's mm. it's about love. And, and, and that's that that musical is particularly about love. Mm. Yeah, I think it's very true. I think that's a, a, a fabulous way to end. I think our first episode as well, because I don't want to yeah, keep yeah. you too long. <laughs> um, um, thank you, yeah, but thank you very much. Chat. And uh, 
Well, thank you. Yeah, and we'll um, we'll get back together for another episode next week. I think. If you're up for it. You're on. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>